Hi, Foreman Therapy Services. Uh, my name is Chris Norton, and I hope you're enjoying your Christmas holiday party. Um, I know, Nate, you just had a baby named Jax. Congratulations. And I'm really excited to share my story, and I'm really appreciative of you being the official sponsor of our documentary film, Seven Yards. And I'd like to take you back to October 16, 2010, when my life was changed forever when I was just an 18 year old kid at Luther College, Decorah, Iowa. And at this point in my life, everything is going according to plan. And my plans were simple. I was gonna be this all American football player. I was gonna meet the girl of my dreams, get a business degree, and hopefully someday make enough money to own my lake house. Or better yet, the girl of my dreams family already owns a lake house. But sometimes life has a plan that's better than yours. Well, on this October 16th day, I'm sprinting downfield. It's the third quarter, uh, just after a touchdown. We're kicking the ball off, and I'm sprinting, and I see this opening for me. And I know that ball carrier is going to run through it. He's trying to score a touchdown. Now I'm going to stop him. Well, I make my tackle, but I miss time my jump just by a split second. And instead of getting my head in front of the ball carrier, my head collides right with his legs. In an instant, I lose all feeling and movement from my neck down. And I'm completely conscious, I'm not in any pain. I tell myself, Chris, stand up. Just stand up. But nothing's working. I can't feel or move a thing. And I'm thinking, this is embarrassing. Like, the game, I can tell, has stopped for me. The athletic trainers are about to run onto the field and check on me. Like, I don't want this kind of attention. I gotta get up. Chris, stand up. What I didn't know then was that I suffered a severe spinal cord injury. It would take me many years before I will stand again. Eventually I'm flown out to Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I wake up on October 17th and my life was completely flipped upside down. I went from being a strong, independent athlete to being completely immobile and dependent on everything. And what felt like a nightmare eventually became my reality. As my doctor comes in and he tells me, Chris, you have a 3% chance of ever regaining any feeling or movement back below the neck. And at that moment, all I can think of is, no way, not me. No way, not me. This is not going to be my life. I am not going to accept this. I'm going to beat the odds. I'm going to do whatever I can each and every day to beat it. And then enters this woman by the name of Megan Gill. And she became my physical therapist. And she would absolutely change my life uh, for the better. And so when I first met Megan, it was five days after uh, my surgery, my spinal cord injury, and I was mad about it because I was just working with another physical therapist and we were friends. I was really enjoying my time with the other therapist. And I didn't know who this Megan was. And then she comes in and the first thing she wants is for me to get out of my hospital bed and into a wheelchair. And I tell her, I, I can't get out of my, my bed. I, I, I get too lightheaded, I get nauseated. I feel like getting sick. We just do stuff from the bed. And she asked, well, what's your goal? My goal is to walk. She said, okay, let's do it. But we got to get you in that chair before we can start walking. And so I said, all right, let's do it then. And so that was just the beginning of her just constantly pushing me out of my comfort zone. And what I appreciated about Megan was that she came in with a plan and a purpose behind the plan for every single physical therapy session. Where up to this point, uh, I felt like the therapist who came in, um, came in to kind of be my friend. Uh, we'd talk, uh, spend 30 minutes stretching. Uh, but with Megan, it was just all business. Uh, we became friends, but in that session, she was just this great coach. And she just constantly was pushing me. So uh, what started out was only 30 minutes being in a power wheelchair reclined. Uh, the next day she pushed me to get to 45 and then 45 to an hour and just kept going and going and eventually uh, made my way to the tilt table 
and they put my tilt table up to help get my blood pressure regulated so we can get myself prepped in order to go into this locomotor, uh, locomotive training system. And I had to be upright for at least 15 minutes during the setup to be in this locomotor training system. And so we're trying to get myself ready on this tilt table. Well, I couldn't make it. I kept passing out. I can only make it about five, 10 minutes. And finally, Megan's like, you know what? We gotta just go for it. And so against all the check marks that we couldn't finish, we got in the locomotive training. I passed out twice. <laughs> But we just kept going and eventually I was able to get on that gate training system. Well, that exact same week, as I'm making this progress, I'm beginning to move my arms a little bit, I begin to feel this new sensation in my left big toe. And I was really excited, I didn't know what it meant, but it just felt like progress was happening in this left big toe when I couldn't move anything in my legs. That's all I ever wanted was to move something in my legs. Well, the doctor comes in, and I tell him the great news, and I could tell he didn't care. And so I asked her, well, can you at least take my shoe off, look at this left big toe? He refused. He says, Chris, you're experiencing a phantom feeling where you want to believe that you can feel or move something in your left big toe so badly, you tricked yourself into thinking it's real, but you made it up but I knew it wasn't this phantom feeling. And the last thing he says to me is, Chris, you'll never move anything in your legs ever again. And he turns and he walks out like it was no big deal. And I was with my dad at the time and he turns to me with tears in his eyes and he says, Chris, do not let anyone tell you what you can or cannot do. And I look back at him with tears in my eyes and say, I never will. And I responded with more hope, determination than ever before. I knew my dad believed me, I knew Megan believed me, they weren't gonna give up on me. And something I really appreciated about Megan was that she would come in that day and was like, it would tell me this new research article that she just read about. That she was uh, up all night thinking about different exercises that we could do. Because every single day she had this plan, she had this other idea to do an exercise. It was always fresh, it was always new. And the thing is, she wanted to achieve my goal of walking just as badly as I did. And if you know me, I wanted that more than anything. And I could tell that passion and that purpose with her and that belief in me. And that gave me even more strength to keep pursuing this goal. Well, not even a week later after that encounter with that doctor, I wake up on this Thanksgiving morning Megan comes in, and I tell her I had this new sensation, this feeling. It's even stronger in my left big toe. Can you pull the curtains, uh, the bed sheets back? So she pulls the bed sheets back, and I wiggle that left big toe. That doctor said I would never move again, and I was pumped. I was so fired up. I told Megan, you go find that doctor, who I like to call Dr. Phantom, and you bring him in here, and you phantom this as I wiggle my toe in his face. Fortunately for him, he was gone that day, but I might have been too fired up. And that toe wiggle was the start of so many more breakthroughs that Megan and I uh, enjoyed together. And so as you're thinking about your uh, therapy and your career, uh, just always come in with a plan and give the confidence and the belief in the person that you're working with and push them outside their comfort zone. Because although I was comfortable working with my other therapists who really were friends and we could socialize, uh, but I knew at the end of the day I wasn't gonna be where I wanted to go uh, by working with them. It was Megan with that kind of that business attitude in that session that really got me to where I'm at today and to be able to walk across the stage of my college gradu graduation and to walk Emily seven yards down the aisle and just that drive that she brought every single day because as a physical therapist, as an occupational therapist, you have the opportunity to change someone's life forever. And so although for you it's just another physical therapy session, but for someone else that you're working with, it's an opportunity that could alter their life forever. And Megan altered my life. 
And I think that's something uh, to strive for and that anyone can really accomplish. And so again, you know, thank you for supporting the film and for me, and I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Thank you.